La Rochelle uh, to meet with Marc Lombard, who of course is the founder and works at the Marc Lombard Yacht Design Group. And of course we're here to speak to you about your association with privilege. And Mark, we we're hoping you could start by talking to us a little bit about your background and, and especially your history with privilege, because I understand it goes right back to the very founding of that boatyard. That's right. Uh, I started my career just designing racing yachts uh 1982 and for seven eight years i was only dealing with racing yachts and then suddenly i met um, a guy who founded the first Vendée globe who's uh, philippe Janto. right and uh, at the time he had founded uh, privilege marine uh Janto marine was called yeah. at the time yeah and he asked me to design his boat for the first Vendée globe which i did mm. and after that experience uh, he said, why don't you design a cruising catamaran for us? And that was privileged with my first production yard. Yeah. Um, and I didn't design the very, very first model. Uh, I upgraded it first and then we started a collaboration that lasts for uh, that, all that long. Of course, the company has been changed three or th two or three times. It came from Jean Marine to uh, Alliora and then the Alliora to Privilege Marine. That's um, every time had some uh, change, but the philosophy of the boats remained the same, right. which is basically the signature is the rostrum of the of the boat, right. and the idea to build a comfortable uh, cruising ocean-going catamarans. Yeah, because that, at the end of the day, that is sort of the big question that, 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 you know, I'm hoping to hear your answer to is what really differentiates today the privileged product from, I mean, the mass, mass the, the majority of all cruising catamarans are built here in France. And so these are very well-known brands. And how, what differentiates privilege from those, those more popular brands? Uh, the the main difference with many other brands is quality of construction. Okay. We were the first brand to use extensive sandwich construction mm -hmm. and giving uh, lighter and stiffer structures. And today um, it's still uh, one of the best company for the infusion process because on many catamarans they use infusion process right. but uh, they do use many plywood bulkheads and plywood stiffeners everywhere they can to right. lower the, the price. On Privilege, the uh, majority of stiffeners are composite. And of course, this allows to have a, a lighter structure. Right. And because we have a lighter structure, we can fit more comfortable items inside. And the difference is mainly on systems, quality of furnitures, um, which are well done at Privilege and sometimes not so well done in other brands. I'm um, talking about plumbing, if you look at mm -hmm. things like electricity, uh, if you look at quality of furnitures, then Privilege has a real difference in quality. Well, yeah. they don't go for the cheapest way to build, but right. they try to, to reach a good quality everywhere. This, this, what you mentioned earlier about weight too, is very important because obviously I, I'm very impressed with the construction methodology of privilege. I'm very happy that even in compound curves, they don't use balsa. They, they continue to go through the extra effort and cost to use foam core for those areas. But despite that, it's, it, the privilege is certainly not the lightest boat in the marketplace in its various size ranges. There are heavier boats, but there are certainly are lighter. How do you address the simplistic view of catamarans that lighter is always better. What, what, what is your take on that? If you talk about performance, the lightest is the best uh, because of course uh, everyone knows that the boat is depends on the resistance depends on the weight and displacement of the hull. Right. Uh, but uh, you have to say one thing is that um, in, in cruising catamaran the performance is not the only criteria. You, you do have a criteria of regularity of, of speed right. and on that point of view a heavy boat can be pretty good because in fact uh, 
uh, heavier boats reach easier, e more easily uh, a certain speed and they keep it uh, all the time. So right. it's, uh, of course, right. and the other, the other thing is so-called light boats are not light boats. I mean, you can read on many magazines that some boats are such and such weight and they are not. They are much heavier because, of course, empty weight is something, right. but what really counts is the cruising weight right. because you're cruising with a boat. So once you put everything in it, if you have a light displacement hull and you load it, you do a very bad boat. Uh, right. If you do a boat that you know that will carry some comfort and you apprehend it before, you design the hull to a certain weight, and then at the end, privilege are similar to other boats' weight, but the difference is the structure might be lighter, but the equipments are much better. Right. So right. you see, for same displacement boats, right. you have a, another distribution. The only result of that is the cost is more expensive right. or privilege. Right. But com considering all the other aspects, it's a, a choice of quality that right. is made. The, the privilege are not the lightest boat, no. they're not also the the heaviest one, no. uh, compared to many very big brands, they are sometimes lighter, yeah. uh, but they are overall well built and yeah. with good systems, that makes the difference. You know, recently the 50 foot privilege, which you originally designed as the 515 mm -hmm. and transitioned to the 5 series and just was re-released with a lot of modifications as the 510. When this was this project was underway, I still remember saying, "Please don't change Mr. Lombard's hull design, because even though you may want to make some differences in the cabin and space and window sizes and such, uh, I had already discovered how well this boat handles the sea." In fact, Mark, just yesterday we did a sea trial, and, yeah. and we're experiencing very heavy weather late September here on the North Atlantic coast, and we went out in eight foot seas. Mm -hmm. and um, with, a, with a new customer. And of course their observation was, we currently own a 68 foot motor yacht and we wouldn't even consider heading out of this channel into these conditions. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't consider such a thing. And I think this is where the, the, the weight, the proper use of weight in the balance of the boat um, really shows considerably better than many other catamarans I've been in in similar conditions that kind of operate like a hinge, whereas your boat really stayed pretty flat. It was really quite remarkable. And it didn't, yet, despite yeah. of that, it didn't slam. And I think that front rostrum, am I not, am I correct in saying this was designed to help reduce the slamming effect many cameras Not really, suffer? he doesn't hit the water. So it's no. over the water. It's more, it's more for rigidity of the forestay okay. and for the interior. Uh, of course, this rostrum allows to have a owner's cabin yes. in it. So that is, a big advantage in terms yes, of, of in the interior. Um, considering the effect on sailing, it has no real direct effect on no. sailing. Okay. Um, what to come back to what you said about uh, safety and performance in rough weather? I was out two days before you uh, mm -hmm. on Monday, right. and it was light air, and we could find that the boat was very regular in speed. Yes. I mean, we had. 10 to 12 knots and it was beating at 7 knots and it was reaching at 8 knots right. and full down winds it was again at 7 knots yes. and that's pretty good for, yes. uh, for light air yes, it um, is. where the boats which are comfortable are supposed to be not so good. Right. In fact the boat is pretty regular right. and as you say yesterday where it was rough yeah. where a boat a light boat could go very fast, privilege won't go very fast, but it will be very right. regular. Right. It will do easily 10 knots, 12 knots right. on the reach, maybe 13, it won't go at 20 knots. But right. it's right. not, if you sail at 20 knots, you are uh, on a racing machine right. and it's not comfortable. You have probably 40 knots of wind in the face yeah. and it's pretty wet. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, performance is something to look at with uh, a certain and background to see what yeah. is useful performance yeah. and what is not good performance for if I design, we design some racing cats or 
even very fast cruising cats, but they are not comfortable. I mean, right. of course, if you if you sail on the reach at 20 knots, you hit the water, you have uh, plenty of water on the deck, yes, and course. it's nothing like a cruise. It can right. be fun, for yes. sure, <laughs> but I don't think right. privileged uh, owners wants to do that. They are yeah. more like ocean-going yep. people. They want comfortable boat, they want regular performance, and that's what they have with privilege. I, I, again, one of the things that I, I'm going to agree with you on this because when we do sea trials like we did yesterday, we're using a boat that an owner has already moved aboard, meaning it's full of his stores, his, his, his tools, full fuel, full water, dinghy hanging on the davits. Um, everything in place creates a real-world scenario and even though we load another 10 people on the boat, the boat's capacity for maintaining a steady performance even with that much weight is to me that what differentiates a vacation boat from a, a true offshore blue water cruising boat. Um, right now there's a new design that will be introduced very soon, um, the new 580. And I know that you were obviously pretty instrumental in the design of the 585 which is still a very popular boat sailing mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. today. And the, yet the 580 is a very different boat. I, I wonder if you could make some comments on what, what the main differences you see in the way these two boats. There are evolutions in, right. uh, in the design of the hulls, a, a bit of evolutions. Uh, not much, but we, we got more uh, curvature in the keel line in the front. Uh, that helps for the trim of the boat. Uh, it's got also more volume in the in the in the bows. Uh, right. It's got probably a little less drag than all the boats, but that's also thanks to CFG and uh, the work we can pr do today. And of course, that's a boat that has been designed last year, so it's pretty new. And uh, we have now currently use we are currently using those tools of CFD which we did not do uh, 15 years ago, of course. Could you so explain CFG to CFD is a way of calculating the flow around um, a hull or okay. airplane or whatever. It's a complex uh, software that uh, allows you to see the wave pattern, to measure the resistance mm -hmm. and to measure the behavior, basically, of the boat. Those are uh, some of the difference. What is different on this 580, it, it has the, an access to the front cockpit, mm -hmm. uh, which we had to do because it's a very, uh, uh, would say, fashionable thing. Yes. And people like it. Yeah. Uh, we did it. It has some disadvantage because right. structurally it has a much uh, 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 the main beams are not so high than right. on all privilege, which are very stiff and right. rigid. And of course, this configuration of structure is more complex. But right. again, we had uh, here in house, we have um, uh, programs, uh, finite element programs that can help right. to analyze rigidity and behavior of the structure. So right. we made a lot of work on right. this boat yeah. to. to keep the same rigidity at other privilege, sorry, and but have the access in the front, right. which was not easy. Well, Mark, well, thank you very, very much. I've, I've enjoyed meeting you. You will. And it's nice to be here in your offices, and uh, we hope that we get to see you again in the not-too-distant future when the very next privilege is designed and launched, that's for sure. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Okay.